in this video I thought we would compare the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the GH5. I've released a blind test comparing these two cameras before, but this time I thought we would go a bit more in depth. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K was released in 2018, and the GH5 was released in the year prior, in March 2017, and it was the first mirrorless camera to shoot in 4K 10-bit 422. They're both Micro Four Thirds cameras, and they're also very popular, so I thought, let's compare them. So let's start with image quality, and for that I thought we would use the footage from my blind test, but this time it won't be blind. For the tests, both cameras were fed the same amount of light using the same aperture, shutter and ISO. We used the same in-camera white balance and tweaked them to match in the grade. The pocket was shot in B-RAW 8 to 1 and 5 to 1, and the GH5 was shot in 4K 10 bits 4 to 2 at 150 megabits per second. The pocket was shot in a Blackmagic Design film, and the GH5 was using Vlog L.
Pocket can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K DCI and UHD. And if you use an aspect ratio of 2.4 to 1, you can go up to 75 frames per second. And if you want to shoot in even higher frame rates, the camera can shoot in 120 frames per second in 2.8K. The GH5 can also shoot in 4K 60fps, but internally that is 8-bit. If you use an external recorder, they can go up to 10 bits. And when it comes to even higher frame rates, the GH5 can actually shoot over 120 frames per second. It can go up all the way to 180, and that is also in 8 bit. On the GH5, you have no crop at all in any of these modes. And on the pockets, you will crop the sensor when shooting in 2.8K, but that is 12 bit Blackmagic RAW. And since it is raw, we will have to crop the sensor. The Blackmagic Pocket 4K can shoot in ProRes and Blackmagic RAW. When it comes to ProRes, that is all the flavors from Proxy to 42HQ. And you can shoot any of these codecs in 4K DCI, 12 bits in B RAW and 10 bits in ProRes. The GH5 shoots in a more compressed format. H.264, and in some modes, H.265. The GH5 will shoot in 4K UHD 10 bits 42, in OLI 400 megabits per second, or in long GOP at 150 megabits per second. The GH5 can shoot in DCI 4K if you use it in 24p mode. Maybe in NTSC, I'm not quite sure, but I know it's not available if you're shooting in PAL then you can only go up to UHD. The 4K60 is 8-bit internal, but if you use an external recorder, you can shoot in 10-bit. If you want to shoot internal 10-bit at 60 frames per second, you can do this at 1080p. Anything higher is 8-bit though. Technically, the GH5 can also shoot in 5K resolution, which I have a video on, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Basically, you're using anamorphic shooting modes, which will utilize the full sensor of the camera. Back when I was using the GH5 as my main camera, I always had to create proxies when shooting in 4K 10 bits, because the files were just very, very heavy on the CPU. But after switching to the Pocket 4K, there's no need for proxies anymore. When it comes to ISO performance and low light, I'm not gonna tell you which is better or what acceptable noise levels are. I'll leave that up to you. So instead, I thought we'd just look at some test footage. But keep in mind, the Pocket has a dual native ISO.
does have autofocus. It's not very famous for reliability and it is a contrast based autofocus, but it is there. On the Pocket 4K we have a non-continuous push autofocus. Push the button and the camera will focus in the center of the image. And it's not something that is intended to be used while rolling. So for both these cameras I would say manual all the way and I don't mind. But the GH5 does win this category but a lot of people wouldn't rely on its autofocus, me included. The GH5 has IBIS, in-body image stabilization, and it's great. So great in fact that once you've gotten used to it, it's quite hard to let go of having IBIS in your camera. And the Pocket doesn't have any IBIS, so if you want stabilization, you have to get it in the lens. So the GH5 I wouldn't have any problems using with just the body and a lens because the IBIS takes out all of that micro jitter. But when it comes to the pocket, for a more pleasing handheld look I would rig it up quite a bit to be honest. Because a heavier camera is a camera that is less prone to movement and you'll get rid of all those ugly micro jitters. So if stabilization is important then GH5 is the clear winner. But well, there is a reason almost no cinema cameras have IBIS. And that's because when you work on that level, you tend to provide your own stabilization and not rely on the camera. You could use a gimbal, a steadicam or a dolly. But when you want handheld, you want organic handheld. It's all about control. A small and light camera with IBIS doesn't look the same handheld as a heavy cinema camera. The IBIS have a more floaty feel to it. When it comes to batteries, the Pocket 4K uses the Canon LPE6 batteries and the GH5 uses Panasonic DMW BLF19 batteries. The GH5 has pretty good battery life and you can get around 2 hours from the internal batteries. The Pocket on the other hand has rather poor battery life and you can get around 30 to 40 minutes using one internal battery. So when using the pockets you probably want some form of external power and I go for V-mount batteries. And the pocket does have a port for external power input so there's no need to use dummy batteries with the pocket. On the GH5 however if you want to use external power you do have to use a dummy battery. Here we can see that they are two different types of cameras. One is a cinema camera in a small form factor and one is more of a stills video hybrid. The GH5 has its famous IBIS. It has autofocus, although not very great, waveforms, you can take stills, you can load LUTs, it has a viewfinder, good battery life, dual car slots which can be used for dual recording so you have an instant backup or relay recording which will allow you to hot swap cards and potentially record forever as long as you can provide power to the camera. The GH5 also has custom modes which you can program to do pretty much anything. Lots of buttons, basically all of them can be programmed and also three wheels, one for iris, one for shutter and one for ISO. On the Pocket 4K we have a big 5 inch touchscreen on the back of the camera. Three custom buttons compared to basically all of them being custom buttons on the GH5. And one wheel, so we'll have to use the same wheel for iris shutter and ISO. If we want to use a wheel for controlling those things. But you can control pretty much everything from the touchscreen if that's the way you want to operate the camera. On the Pocket 4K you can load your own LUTs into the camera. You have false color already installed in the camera. There is no waveforms though. And when it comes to the output from the HDMI, you can control what you want to send out to the HDMI compared to the LCD independently of each other. So you can send false color to your LCD on the camera while sending out a clean signal on the HDMI. Or maybe you want focus peaking on the HDMI but not on the LCD and so on. On the GH5 there is no false color, but I actually made a video on how you can create your own and load that into the camera. Both cameras have Bluetooth for remote control, but I would give the edge to the GH5 since the app is very 
awesome to be honest and will also send you a video feed to your phone. The GH5 can be used as is and the Pocket probably needs some rigging to make it more functional. On the Pocket 4K we have a 3.5mm mic input as well as a mini XLR with phantom power. On the GH5 we only have the 3.5mm mic input. Both cameras also have 3.5mm headphone out. On the Pocket 4K you can record two channels of audio and you can mix and match between the different inputs. You can use the built-in internal microphones on one channel and use the XLR on the other. Or you can use the left channel of the 3.5mm on one channel and then XLR microphone with phantom power on the other. When using the GH5 you get either the internal microphones of the camera or the external microphone plugged in through the 3.5mm mic input. You can't use them both at the same time. But the mic input, however, is a stereo input. So if you're using a splitter that splits the left and right channel into two different connections, you can technically use two microphones at the same time. And I have done this in the past. But since this is more of a hack and not a actual feature of the camera, you can't control the gain for the two different channels independently of each other, since it's just the one track on the camera. You can however add XLR inputs to the GH5 by buying the optional XLR accessory. But when it comes to the audio quality, I thought you could just listen for yourself. And since I don't own the GH5 anymore, I'll use some old footage for the audio. I think it's very important to have a properly exposed image at each ISO when actually testing the ISO performance, so instead I use the shutter to compensate. This is an audio test using the Rode Video Micro on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. When recording audio on the Pocket 4K, at least when using the 3.5mm mic input, the volume is quite low. When recording this talking head right now, I have the gain set at 100% and the mic is only roughly 20cm away from my mouth. When I was using the same setup with the GH5, I didn't have to go anywhere near the max gain setting. So this is an issue with the camera and not the microphone. And since I don't own a XLR microphone, I can't test if it's the same when using the XLR inputs, but I read online that others do have the same issue, at least when using weaker microphones. Both cameras use the same mount, the Micro Four Thirds mount. The Pocket has a slightly bigger than traditional Micro Four Thirds sensor, a 1.9x compared to 2x that the GH5 uses. The GH5 has a 17.3x13mm 4x3 sensor. The Pocket uses a slightly wider sensor at 18.96x10mm, and that is 17x9 or DCI. Due to the DCI 4K sensor on the Pocket, when shooting in 16x9 UHD, it crops the sensor and you have pretty much the same sensor size on both cameras. I used both cameras with speed boosters, effectively making them bigger than Super 35, a 1.35x on the Pocket and a 1.42x on the GH5. The GH5 has a 20.3 megapixel sensor, 5196 by 3907 the Pocket uses more of a video sensor, which has a resolution of 4096 by 2160 which is 4K DCI, and that is a megapixel count of 8.8. .8. On the GH5 we can actually shoot the whole 4x3 sensor using the anamorphic shooting modes of the camera. On the Pocket 4K you have the option of recording to SD cards, CFast cards or external SSDs through the USB-C port on the camera. The GH5 has dual SD card slots. 
the dual card slots can be used for dual recording, which will give you an instant backup, or just relay record and you can hot swap the cards and record forever. Both cameras have 3.5mm microphone inputs and headphone out. They both use full-sized HDMI outputs. On the pocket we have a port for external power input, and that is also a locking connection. So if you accidentally pull on the cable, it won't cut power to the camera. The GH5 has a remote port, but both cameras have Bluetooth for remote control as well. On the 4K we have a USB-C, which we can use for external SSDs or run-stop recording. The USB-C port on the GH5, however, is only for connecting it to the computer. And to wrap it up, we have Mini XLR with phantom power on the Pocket 4K. To sum it up, we have two very capable cameras. And which one to choose depends on what you want to use it for. The Pocket is a cinema camera, and the GH5 is more of a video camera, which also takes stills. A hybrid with a video focus. So which camera to choose really depends on which situations you will put the camera in. Are you a solo run and gun kind of guy, or are you planning to use it in more of a production environment? That is a question that only you can answer, but at least I hope this video was helpful in making your decision. But that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.